Hello, I'm Ian Scales, you're watching Telecom TV, and I'm about to interview Mike Short, who is a Vice President at Telefonica. Mike, welcome. Listen, we're weeks out from Mobile World Congress, and I want to talk about telcos. Not all the glitz and glamour and the, the infrastructure and the um, mobile handsets and so on, but about what the conference was originally all about, that's telco strategies, telco concerns. So to start with, let's talk about some of the difficulties, some of the dark spots perhaps, that telcos are facing this year. What are some of those difficulties and how can they overcome them? So the mobile industry as a whole has probably exceeded around 7 billion customers. That really means now we're not so much selling to customers for a new connection, but we're mainly selling for new services. That also means that we are looking at how do we cost reduce some of the services we offer. So some of the areas like software defined networks or network function virtualization, some of those areas about sharing networks or even shoring up networks to make sure they last as you transition to 4G, making sure also there's enough spectrum which can be handled cost effectively. So there are lots of network issues and billing issues to keep under control in terms of cost because we're not finding new customers to connect so much anymore. What we are doing though is we're connecting more services which is adding to the mix. So much more in the way of data services, connecting to the internet. We're also connecting more and more machines which will add to that subscription number. Some would predict that we're rising from around 7 billion subscriptions globally to around 11 or 12 billion by the year 2020. So that in turn means you need to be cost effective for the machine to machine world as well as for the person to person world. Uh, we can also see some areas where customers want to do much more in the way of video. So handling the higher speed networks with 4G and doing some of the research for the future is also important. So I'm sure we're going to see at this World Congress more of a digital World Congress rather than just a mobile World Congress. Of course, the flip side of all that data gathering is that people have valid fears, I think, about the privacy and about the security of that data. Do you think that's a fear that the industry itself has to address? Well, we need to keep trust with all of our stakeholders, whether they're customers or governments and regulators or some of the key partners that we uh, deliver services uh, with. Uh, in days gone by, we used to say, uh, are the towers going to be trusted? Um, we might say today, where have all the towers gone as we're doing more and more indoor services? But in terms of data, we only use data for the purposes of the customer service. So if we don't know where a customer is, we can't connect to the customer. So we need to know the location of a customer to be able to connect to them. We also need to have some data on the customer to be able to do the billing and customer care. We certainly need to have information to support other things that the customer may need. So maybe the customer might be due an upgrade of a handset or, or device. So, so the data we handle very responsibly because that's the way we're licensed, that's the way we're regulated. And we would only use the data for other purposes if it were aggregated, anonymized and visualized. And that might be useful for some sectors like health or transport. But frankly, we need to maintain that digital confidence and trust with our customer and the sectors who we serve. So what is the industry doing to build that trust? Well, as Telefonica, we've had a digital confidence program running for a couple of years now. And, and that's about assurance to customers that the data is kept only for the purposes of the service. But in addition to that, we have started to look at other ways in which we can communicate that. Uh, we certainly do not for example, offer that data out to anybody other than the police under warrant, and that's a, a legal requirement on us. So that's a reassurance we'll continue to communicate. With the GSM Association, we've had some discussions to say, how do we make sure that this kind of approach to handling data is dealt with consistently? So when it comes to roaming, we want the same egalitarian treatment whenever we send customers to an overseas network. Um, it's a difficult one to fix because actually there's a poor understanding in this area. So it probably also needs stronger dialogue than we've had to date. But I think in practice, without the data, we can't offer the service. We're only licensed to be licensing and offering services to customers. OK, so those are the downsides. What are the bright spots? What are the important things that we're going to be seeing in Barcelona? I think this industry is fantastic uh, in the sense of innovation. It's continuing at one hell of a pace. Uh, so I've been coming to this event for over 20 years. I'm sure we're going to see many more things that can be connected, many more devices of different types, but no longer just the voice devices, increasingly the machines that you could connect. 
uh, whether it be connected cars, whether it be solutions for a connected city, or maybe some solutions for connected health. I sometimes call those devices all creatures great and small because often they're very small, but the range is widening all the way from small modems all the way up to large tablets. And I'm sure we're going to see other areas like street furniture being connected, other things that are in the home of the future being connected. It's very exciting, really. What about the way the network itself is evolving? I mean, I know it's a, a boring old topic, but costs. Cost cutting is one of the big concerns. What are we going to see at Mobile World Congress about costs? With the transition from 3G to 4G, clearly there is a major investment going on anyway. Some of the advantages of 4G means that you're adding in more capacity at a lower cost per bit. That also means that you can serve more customers with their added capacity more cost effectively. We'll also see more network sharing, more combinations of uh, sharing across different license boundaries and maybe with some mergers and acquisitions some shared infrastructure across borders. What we can also see I think is ways in which the data services might have more of a data architecture so things like NFV, network function virtualization to, 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 to federate if you like the network elements. These are lessons taken from the IT world that are supporting the internet today being added to the mobile world. I'm sure there'll be other solutions which are cost effective in terms of software defined networks as well. In turn, we also need to look at effective uh, customer care, which can increasingly be online. It needn't be coming into a shop with the full sale activity. You may prefer as a customer to buy online. So what are the systems behind online sales and customer service? I'm sure we'll see people investing in those. And finally, on the billing and customer care side, some of the billing systems need to be more orientated towards the data world, where it's itemized billing in a different means. Why do you need a printed bill? Why don't you have an online bill? Why, why don't you have cost center billing? Why don't you have location centered billing? Some of those options exist today, and we're offering many of those. And that's helped with the cost reduction, and there'll be other solutions being sought in that area as well. How important do you think connected cars are going to be? I know that over the last three years or so, that's been building up at Mobile World Congress, and my guess is that we're going to see even more this year. Yes, I'm sure we'll see at least 10 cars uh, on, at the exhibition, um, and they will be there with connectivity. Initially, the connectivity will be geared towards safety and uh, regulation in Europe called eCall, where the car can notify the emergency authority if there's been an accident. But that's just the beginning. You can start to imagine a world of internet on wheels, where you, the driver, or you, the passenger, in a pro-safety way, have access to information wherever you are. That could include real-time maps. Uh, that could include congestion ahead. That could in include information about your next fuel stop, whether it's diesel or, or gas or, or, or electricity. That may also include information about hotels with vacant rooms or uh, restaurants that are open till late. These are about pro-convenience as well as pro-innovation. I'm sure also we can see the car entertaining the children in the back seats, maybe with live connectivity so they can download their games. But at the end of the day, that connectivity wave has to fit both new cars as well as second-hand cars. So some of the solutions for both will be very interesting, interesting to see. So I suppose the smart car topic tips over neatly into the smart city idea as well, doesn't it? Yes, I think with smart cities, I mean, we, we don't really have very smart cities today. I mean, there are some cities where the bus stop will tell you when the next bus is about to arrive in a few minutes. But that's not typical for all the cities around the world. We could also imagine uh, lighting columns that have sensors in them where the lighting columns can go on or off based on whether there are people around or not, maybe to save the energy consumption and our taxpayers' bills. We can also see the idea of car parks telling you where spaces are rather than you having to drive around an unknown city and find that unknown parking space. So we can start to alleviate congestion. So these future cities are much more clean, I would hope, but also more energy sensitive uh, to keep the cost down and perhaps also more secure and welcoming to tourists. I guess the thing that interests me about all of this is the macro effect, you know, the big effect, how it's changing the way we see ourselves how the technology is being put to work in unexpected ways to change our relationship with the world. Yes, I agree with that. I mean, I believe in a world of internet for all, where everybody has access to the internet wherever they need it, wherever they want it. So that means it's not just in the home or in the office. It's when they're out and about, when they're on the street, in the city or, or somewhere else. That it also means that it's got to be more convenient to access the internet for whatever you need, whether it's information or services or even features. 
Um, what I don't think is right is that the mobile penetration has risen so high in terms of the number of customers without the internet penetration keeping up at that rate. Clearly there are many people in the Western world who have mobile and internet, but there are many people who are still to go onto the internet that we need to connect and provide those services for. So more work to be done? There's quite a lot of work to be done. Uh, I think we need to make it more inclusive for all age ranges, all segments and all sectors. Mike, thanks very much.